Hello everybody, it's the Black Car Guru back with another video. Two words, Red Bull. But let's get to the story of Pontiac. In today's day and age, a lot of people only know Pontiac from their GTOs, their G8 GTs, their G8 GXPs and things of that nature. And as of today, Pontiac is nothing more than a memory. They will never return. Oh, but back in the day, Pontiac was dropping some major, major heat. I'm talking about the 455 big block, guys. The Pontiac 455 was introduced in 1970 for Pontiac's big booty, I mean, for Pontiac's big bodied vehicles. The Pontiac 455 was meant to be a reliable, torque friendly engine for all of their big body platforms and things of that nature. It was in the Bonnevilles, the Trans Ams, and the GTOs. Honestly, guys, the Pontiac 455 was nothing more than an improved Pontiac 428. The 455 also had different variants like the high output version and the super duty version. It had a bore of 4.15 inches and a stroke of 4.21 inches. It also had a compression ratio of 8.2 to 1. As far as horsepower, that really fluctuated because of um, advertisement gimmicks and um emissions regulations and sometimes they'll lie to basically appease the insurance companies because think about it you have a high horsepower vehicle back in the day your insurance um is about to go through the roof oh you have a pontiac 455 big block just laying around and you want to upgrade it you want that you want max power without touching the bottom end right i got you start with some speedmaster cast aluminum cylinder heads 4150 style intake manifold but let's stop when it comes to all of your old pontiac engine parts i suggest you go to butlers but let's continue go to butlers and get their custom grind cams and their lifter set then you can top this off with a 750 or an 850 cfm carburetor but let's just stop and think for a second bro this engine would make the perfect the perfect the perfect race engine if you can find one you already have the cubic inches all you need to do is go back through with forged internals um raise that compression ratio from 8.2 to 1 to um hell um 11.5 to 1 and you know dome pistons and um you know you don't even have to run the speed master heads you can run something else then drop that son of a gun inside of a third gen firebird think about it 455 pontiac big block with a TH400, you know, turbo 400, a Ford 9-inch rear end, a good four-link suspension, and a 300 shot of nitrous. Boy, you'll be kicking ass. Now, when it comes to vehicles that have the potential to slay anything you line it up against, I have to give it to the Geo Metro first. This is just a random list. The Geo Metro is so damn unassuming, like... You look at it and go, ha, oh, man, I could beat that thing 12 times over again. But listen, this thing has potential. As we speak, there is a good friend of mine stuffing a 2JZ inside of a Geo Metro. You know who I'm talking about. You don't even have to go with a 2JZ like he did. You can go with a 4G63T. You can do a case swap on these things. They don't weigh nothing. And hell, when they first came out, they didn't have but 58 to like 79 horsepower. I could be a few numbers off, but these didn't have a lot of horsepower. And they probably weigh like 1,500 pounds, if that. This thing is literally a, a adult size go-kart. Ready for you to drop something else inside of that hood. The Lexus SC300 and 400, but we're going to stay with the 300 because you guys love 2JZs. The SC300, a.k.a. the Toyota Soarer, is basically the Mark IV Supra's freaky older cousin. It has a 2JZ GE block, which is basically like the GTE block, except without the turbos and shit of that nature. But it's still a closed deck block like the Mark IV Supra. The rods are beefier than the ones in the IS300 and the GS300, so you can literally keep the rods and the crank, but get like dish pistons, like negative 22 dish pistons and ramrod boost all through there all day, literally. It, it's like a, it's basically a Mark IV Super with a tuxedo on. 